developers for VDI, uh, uh, infrastructures, Amazon, and obviously we support any physical uh, Windows device. The other component running at the customer site would be the control app monitor service, which runs as a Windows service on dedicated servers. And it's in charge of 24 seven alerting and historical data uploads. So essentially our insights analytics platform is, uh, is getting its data from the continuous uploads done by the monitor service running at the customer site. So we continuously upload data to Amazon S3. Uh, and this enables us to actually, um, to actually display the data in control app insights. Okay, so this is the architecture in a nutshell. Obviously, you know, any follow-up questions, um, uh, just, you know, just contact our support or, or pre sale guys. We also have full support for on-premises deployment modes. Okay, so, you know, if, if a prospect or a customer for any reason cannot work with a cloud-based solution, whether it's for compliance or other reasons, we enable the customers to install the full control app stack on-premises. This would mainly include the control up on premises server, uh, a few databases hosted on a central SQL database, and now our IP, IOP server, which is essentially the insights on premises flavor. Uh, the rest of the components are similar to the hybrid cloud deployment module. Okay, so as usual with control up, you know, we, we don't waste your time with tons of uh, slides. We will just jump right into the, the live demo part. Um, by the way, you know, feel free to ask questions. You can use the go to meeting chat for that, and we will try to answer them uh, uh, during the webinar. So, just as a brief agenda for this webinar, we're going to start with uh, some of the major features we added in 7.2. The first one is our uh, virtual expert, uh, essentially a service that enables you to uh, troubleshoot issues faster inside the real time console. Next, we'll cover our brand new Nutanix AHV integration, which is uh, the latest hypervisor we added support for in 7.2. Uh, we're then going to cover some pretty neat features we added in 7.2. This includes the highly anticipated single metric trigger. Um, we have added support uh, for new metrics in the process level, which enables you to see um, the disk IO and network IO per process, which is really great for all kinds of use cases. Um, and finally, some Netscaler integration enhancements we added in 7.2. From there, we'll move on to some insights demos. I'm going to showcase our new right sizing report, which is really great. We have excellent feedback from the field about that. Uh, and finally, we'll cover the environment assessment, which is a new report that highlights KPIs collected from 30, 30 days activity of the customer environment. And as promised, I'm going to quickly show you some of the new features that are going to be part of Control Up 7.3. Okay, so we... Without further ado, let's jump to the live demo. So you should see on my screen now the Control Up 7.2 console. Uh, I'm going to do a brief overview of the console and what you're seeing here, especially for uh, new guys out there. Okay, so let's see what we have here. On the left side, this is the tree containing all the managed objects, all the managed entities we cover with Control Up. So starting from top to bottom, initially you can see the hypervisor tree. The, in here, you will see all the hypervisor integrations you added into the control app organization. Um, as mentioned, we, we support the four major commercial hypervisors. The Amware, Zenser, and IPV were available before 7.2. And Nutanix Acropolis is a new integration available since uh, 7.2. So I'm going to cover that a bit later today. Once uh, the hypervisor is connected, it will populate the host view with the relevant uh, hypervisor boxes. Again, it's, it could be SXI, HPV, uh, AHV, or Zen server. It will also populate the computer's view with all the VMs we found from the hypervisor connection. The way we connect to hypervisors is quite simple. We do not require any agents. We simply connect to the remote uh, web API service, whether it's, if, if it, for example, if you're dealing with Zen server, with, with vSphere, we will connect to the vSphere web service SDK. So the only prerequisite would be defining the, the web service running on the vCenter and providing uh, read-only credentials to that service. Once this is configured, that's it. We are fully integrated with vSphere. Uh, moving forward, we have integration with Amazon, right? So anyone who is, who is managing EC2 VMs, he can actually connect to the Amazon EC2 region and automatically enumerate EC2 instances and see cost and performance metrics in real time. Uh, we do support API level integration with Zen Desktop, 
Okay, again, the integration is quite simple. Um, you simply point control up to one of your brokers and provide read-only credentials, and that's pretty much it. From that moment on, we will continuously run uh, two types of queries against the Zen desktop site. One would be based on the OData REST API to get data from the monitor service, and the other would be partial uh, API to get uh, health status for the brokers uh, and some VDA and session data you will see later on. Uh, new in 7.1 is the NetScaler integration. Again, the same concept where we connect remotely to the API service. In this case, we're using the Nitro APIs that NetScaler exposes, which allows us to get health and, uh, and performance data from NetScaler with very minimal footprint on the actual NetScaler box. We have added a few metrics in 7.2, which I'll cover a bit later down the line. Uh, and finally, once we cover all the external data sources, we have our very own agent running inside uh, the guest OSs. So in Spanky, we support all the Windows flavors. This includes anything from Windows 7 up to Windows Server 2019. Um, and you will see during the demo what kind of metrics we can get from the agent. This includes some pretty advanced um, metrics such as application load time, login duration metrics, latency, process IOPS, et cetera. Um, the views is where you can actually consume the real-time data. So we have views for uh, uh, covering the hosts. Uh, we can see the computer data in real-time. Uh, we see sessions, processes. Um, we have storage views where we can see all the data stores, which the different type of visors exposes, obviously net scalers. Um, so everything can be reached via here to see the flat views. And obviously we have drill downs, which we'll cover um, once we reach the virtual expert demo. Okay, so this is in a nutshell, the controller real-time console. Now, I do want to start with uh, one of the coolest new features in 7.2, and that would be the virtual expert assisted troubleshooting. Okay, so let's start with, with, with a live example. You can see here in the host view that ES602 is currently experiencing very high eye usage. It's actually more than 5,000 IOPS, which obviously um, caused the stress level to reach a critical state. Now, in 7.2, by the way, you can always double click on the stress level column to see exactly which metrics are contributing to the load, uh, which is really nice and, and makes uh, understanding the stress level color much easier. Uh, and the newest addition is the ability to actually click on the problematic cell like I'm doing here. And the virtual expert will suggest to you guys the next drill down uh, steps in order to find root cause. Okay, so I'm going to actually go ahead and try and click the final drill down uh, suggestion here. And control will automatically drill down all the way to the processes view and show which, which process is actually causing the IO issue on the entire host. Okay, so again, it's pretty cool. With a single click, I can see the specific process on the specific session causing the issue all the way down, uh, uh, or in this case, up on the host experiencing the issue. Okay, so again, pretty cool. I'll show you two one more time. I'm going back to the host level. I'm clicking on the relevant column here, and I can either drill down, double click on the, on the column, or drill down directly to the suggested last navigation step. If I go ahead and double click on the column, you will see that Control Up automatically navigates to the next drill down step, in this case, the VM view. And it's showing me the VM's view running on this specific hypervisor, and it's automatically sorted by the most um, relevant column, in this case, the virtual read apps. So we can see that CRDSH01 is the offending VM consuming most of the IOPS on this specific hypervisor. I can either, again, click here and drill down directly to processes or double click the cell itself and drill down to the next suggested layer, in this case, sessions. And then again, double click this highlighted cell here and actually drill down again to the process causing the issue. Okay, so again, the virtual expert in 7.2 offers uh, a brand new way to intuitively find the root cause, either by taking you directly to the suggested view or by highlighting the most uh, probable cause of the issue on the grid you're, you're currently seeing. Okay, now, uh, one question which we have seen a lot with this feature is, is it customizable? Can you guys actually uh, play with the drill down exercise and add your own uh, drill down uh, rules? So the answer is yes. You guys can go to settings. You can click on the contextual navigation button here, and you will do, uh, you will see, and, and you can do two things, okay? So first, you can see the out-of-the-box community drill-down uh, uh, drill rules, 
So for example, the one I've just shown you guys, I can go to the host view, and we have actually we have actually utilized the rule configured here. Okay, so if you add this, you can see that if I, as a control app user, I am double clicking on the host data store column, control app will automatically drill down to the VM's view, sorted by, uh, sorry, uh, lo looking on the detailed view IO preset and sorted by the virtual discrete IOPS column. Okay, so this is an out of the box rule. You don't have to configure it yourself. And as you can see here, we have quite a few out of the box rules configured for all the relevant entities. And obviously you can create your own, okay? You can go here and add a new rule, select the relevant uh, column you want to drill down on, select the relevant preset, sorting order, and you're good to go. Okay, so it's fully customizable. Now, I do want to highlight uh, two more features that relate to the virtual exit concepts. One I've shown already is the fact that you can actually double click the stress level and quickly see which metrics are contributing to the stress level, which is a great addition in 7.2. And there is another thing which I think quite fun, right? So let's go to the sessions view. As I mentioned before, uh, we do monitor the log on duration activity for sessions, okay? You can see here that one of the sessions is experiencing a very high log on duration, almost uh, two minutes, okay? So just like the stress level, I can highlight the log on duration um, cell and double click on it to actually see Again, which drill down um, uh, metric, in this case, the group, group policy load time is actually contributing to the high log on duration. So by double clicking the log on duration cell, I can actually see immediately that the group policy load time is the major culprit in this specific slow log on duration case. Okay, now I can tell you guys that one of our upcoming plans in the next uh, controller versions is to actually integrate our scripting uh, mechanism or SBA engine uh, with the virtual ex expert concept. So these days I can right click the session and I can manually search for scripts related to this issue and go ahead and execute them in order to get some more info about why, why the group policy processing was really slow for this specific session, okay? But this was a manual step. What we're planning to do in the future as, as, as a sort of enhancement to the virtual expert concept is to actually you know, automatically understand that the root cause is slow group policy processing. And when you will click on this cell, we will automatically offer you to execute the relevant script to get more data. So this is planned down the line. Okay, so this was hopefully a, a brief but, uh, but clear explanation of the new virtual access expert uh, a concept, I'm going to move forward into the, the next major feature in 7.2. So as described before, we have added full support for the Nutanix Acropolis or AHV um, hypervisor. So I'm going to focus on the Nutanix cluster I have here. I want to show you how the connection string looks like. So it's quite similar to the other hypervisors uh, uh, connections we have. Again, it's an agentless operation. Nothing needs to be installed on the on the Nutanix uh, boxes or the CSV VMs. All you need to do is point control up to the Nutanix uh, web service, uh, provide the relevant credential set, and that's it. Now, once this is configured, you can connect to the hyper, to the Nutanix uh, Acropolis system and see real time data. So what we see here is that the, the different uh, Nutanix hosts we have running in our small cluster. You can see metadata metrics like that, like the hypervisor version, uh, the app time, uh, the CPU model, you know, the IP address of the management and the management interface, um, BIOS versions, et cetera. And obviously we can see the real-time data, which includes CPU, RAM usage, you know, data store IOPS, uh, maintenance mode, and some pretty cool stuff about um, your hosts. Uh, and the same is true regarding the Nutanix VMs, right? So we, we both provide data about the regular VMs running on your Nutanix uh, on your Nutanix cluster, but we also provide data about the manage the manager VMs, the CVMs, right? You can see them in here. Um, let's see if I can add them to the view. Just a sec, guys. Yeah, so you can see here, like these would be the CVMs, right? These are the uh, uh, the management VMs that are running on each Nutanix Acropolis box. And you have visibility to them just like any other VM you manage in, 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 uh, in control of. Okay, so this, this is pretty cool. 
Um, another thing we added for Nutanix customers, which is not available out of the box in Prism, is the ability to actually enable or disable the host maintenance mode right from within the same interface. So no need to jump to any CLI or run partial commands, you can just do it from here, which simplifies Nutanix management, uh, uh, which is pretty clear from this specific uh, state here. Mm. Now, another thing um, I want to mention is that our existing insights reports, uh, which show data about hypervisors and, and VMs are obviously compatible with Nutanix data, right? So anyone who will integrate control up uh, with this existing Nutanix cluster will immediately enjoy historical data and insights about uh, uh, both the hyper hypervisors and the VMs themselves. Okay, so I'm now moving on to the other major features in Control Up 7.2. So let's start with one of the most uh, anticipated features, and that would be the, the advanced trigger, or what we call internally the single metric trigger. So before I showcase the new feature, I first want to kind of explain the limitation we had uh, with incident triggers pr prior to 7.2, okay? So prior to 7.2, uh, the main, or I would say the only supported way to actually create an incident trigger and get, for example, an email notification if one of the metrics crossed the configure threshold was to go through the stress level incident trigger type, uh, which is kind of complex and, and sometimes uh, rather cumbersome, okay? Let me explain. So as I've shown you guys in, during the demo, we have a stress level column for each entity we manage to control up. And the stress level is essentially a weighted kind of a weighted, weighted average or score, combining all the relevant columns affecting it uh, in any given time, right? So for example, you can say that, uh, uh, you know, the free space on the C drive, right? Um, if it's below, I don't know, if, if it's below uh, um, one gigabyte, then go ahead, you know, affect the stress level by a weight of one, two or whatever, right? So if you want to get a notification regarding free space, then the only way to do it before 7.2 would be to configure the, the free space uh, uh, metric to affect a stress level and then use a stress level based incident trigger to get an alert, which is quite cumbersome. Now, I'm really glad to report that in 7.2, all of this has been much simplified, okay? So let's see how we did that. So essentially we added a brand new incident trigger type called, uh, called advance. Okay, and let me show you a few examples of how we can use that to simplify things here. So let's start with the uh, with free disk space example, okay? Okay, so in this case, I've actually created a rather, um, rather simple, rather simple uh, uh, incident trigger. The only thing I'm look looking on here is, you know, let me know Oh, no, sorry, that's the wrong metric. Just a sec, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, that's the one I was looking for. Okay, so what we can do with the, with the new trigger type is essentially configure a pretty simple uh, scenario, like something you see here and basically add a single, a, single, uh, um, a single filter looking on one metric, okay? In this case, the free space and system drive. So this incident trigger, the only thing it will look for, it will continuously monitor the free space and system drive uh, metric. And once it becomes lower than five gigabytes as configured here, it will trigger an alert, okay? So no need to go through the stress level, um, no need to configure any kinds of weights or anything of that sort. And obviously you can configure the minimum duration, okay? So not so relevant for free space, but for example, if you want to get a, a notification about high CPU usage, you can simply configure this uh, new advanced trigger to, re to, to watch over the CPU metric and, and report once it's crossing, uh, for example, 90%, but you can configure here that it will trigger only if it was uh, happening for more than three minutes, for example. Okay, so again, a very simple way to create alerts in Control of 7.2 by using the new advanced uh, incident trigger type. Um, now, one of the questions we got from this, uh, you know, after some customers seen this feature is, you know, 
can, can we actually configure internet triggers on text-based columns, right? Not only metrics. And, and I'm happy to say that the answer is yes, okay? So let's look at another example in here. Let's look on uh, Zen desktop video registration, okay? So by using the new advanced trigger, I can actually configure something similar to what you're seeing on screen here, okay? So I can either do it uh, uh, with a simple uh, uh, filter like you see here, or I can configure the state to show a different state, okay? So let me explain. What you're seeing in here is a trigger that will fire whenever the XD registration uh, column for the VDA will switch to an unregistered uh, data set. So again, this is a text-based column, but we can still use that uh, to create an incident, incident trigger in 7.2. So the incident trigger, the new incident trigger in 7.2 supports both performance metrics and text-based text metrics, um, which, you know, we, we already saw a lot of customers using that to actually beef up their, uh, their monitoring status in, uh, in 7.2. And there is one other example I want to show you guys, which, which kind of show how simplified this is. Let's see if I can find that in here. Yeah, okay, so this is the one of my favorite examples. So again, using the new advanced trigger type, uh, I can simply create a trigger based on the session record. I, I, I told Control App to look for uh, sessions who has any state before, but once specifically the logon duration column is, is, is reporting uh, higher than 60 seconds uh, logon duration, go ahead and create an incident and send an email alert. Okay, so again, we can use this trigger type on any type of column you see in the, in the console, whether it's performance-based or text-based, and create simplified alerts for your environment. Okay, I'm moving forward to another new feature in 7.2, one, probably one of my favorites because I was kind of involved in the research, I guess, and that would be the, the new process metrics. Okay, so let's look here real quick. So... This is the controller processes view you see here. Uh, and these are the new metrics we added in 7.2. So it's important to mention that before 7.2, we also had IO metrics for processes, but the thing is they were aggregated metrics that were aggregating both the network and disk IO. So there was no easy way to distinguish between network related IO and disk related IO. And this is now completely solved in 7.2. As you can see here, we have the disk reads and write KBPS for each process and the network send receive KBPS per process. Okay, so let's try and generate one, um, one quick example in here. I'm going to open, uh, I'll try to open a YouTube video here. Let's do it live, you know, the control up way. Uh, so I'm going to browse to YouTube. Hopefully you won't see something embar embarrassing in my, my feed here. Let's look for any kind of 4K trailers. Hopefully they will generate some, uh, some nice traffic here. So what I'm hoping to show here is that by using the new feature, we can actually find that, um, we can actually find that the IO generated by this process is not disk bound, but rather uh, network bound or, or both, you know, depending on the way the app works. So let's go ahead and try and find this specific iExplore process here, and we can use our built-in uh, browser URL feature to actually see which process we're dealing with. And you can see it here, okay? So you can see here like the, the, the dev deviation between the network usage and the disk IO usage. You can see that obviously most of the generated traffic is actually network received, right? Because this is the essentially a download stream from the network uh, to the browser running here in my data center. Okay, so again, new feature in 7.2, easy way to distinguish between disk I.O. and network I.O. on the process level. Okay, uh, moving forward, um, probably the last feature I want to highlight in 7.2 would, uh, would be the enhanced uh, Netscaler support. We, we, we have added a few interesting features to our Netscaler integration, so I'll try to cover them quick. So, uh, First, one of the things we added is brand new high availability uh, monitoring for Netscaling. So as you can see here, we now have uh, brand new columns like the HA system states, whether it's up or down. We can see if the node we're dealing with is the primary or the secondary. Um, oops, sorry. I think we have a few more columns which are not displayed by default. Let's see here. Oh, sorry. These are 
uh, part of the new load balancers column. Okay, so A, new high availability metrics for NetScaler. Um, B, we have added new actions, right? So um, in 7.2, when you right click NetScaler load, load balancers, you can actually disable, disable or enable the load balancer directly from here. We will run for you the Nitro API call and we'll obviously show the state of the load balancers in real time in the grid. Okay, so this is, uh, this is pretty cool. And another thing I want to show you in regards to Netscape is a pretty massive work we did by enhancing our script-based actions. Okay, so I think some of them are installed here. You can see um, some of them running here. So we now have new script-based actions that can, you know, can get new data about the Netscape, whether it's uh, uh, the license information, um, the, some more advanced statistics, et cetera. Um, for those who are not familiar with the script-based action feature, the only thing you guys need to do as a customer is click on the script-based action button here. And then you can actually browse our online community store. For example, browse for NetScaler specific scripts and just click on add scripts. And then it will be available as a right-click action from within the, con the console. Okay, so th these are the primary NetScaler enhancements in, in, in 7.2. Uh, okay, so this was a quick tour of the brand new feature in 7.2, again, is a highlight, uh, you know, the brand new a virtual expert assisted troubleshooting, Nutanix AHV integration, uh, the new advanced triggers, which enable you to simplify alerting by configuring a single metric uh, uh, as a condition, um, the process disk and network IO, and finally the load, the, the net scaler uh, uh, enhancements we've just seen. Okay, so I do want to move forward with. Uh, uh, with the insights related uh, uh, features. Okay, so let's log on to insights here. And again, just as a reminder, insights is our web-based historical reporting and analytics solution. Uh, I'm going to fire up the, uh, to fire the solution. Uh, for those who are not familiar with insights, um, the, initial, the initial page is called Top Insights. That's essentially a dashboard showing you the uh, major in the last 24 hours of activity. Okay, so this includes stuff like uh, a unique number of sessions, uh, VMs or, or hosts with, with high CPU peaks, um, the most popular app. So basically um, a myriad of widgets you're seeing on screen right now. It's a great way to get kind of a, a high level overview of what's happening in the environment. And again, this is based on the previous day activity. Now, recently we added two new reports and that's what I'm going to cover uh, that's what I'm going to cover in, uh, in this webinar, okay? So the first new report is the environment assessment. In here, we are actually aggregating the last 30 days of data and then providing some really high level but excellent stats about your environment, okay? So let's go ahead and cover that a bit before we jump into the, the size and recommendation report. So first, let's describe the data set. So as mentioned, Control of Insights actually crunch in real time the last 30 days worth of data coming in from the monitor service. And then it's displaying a set of widgets based on the data sources that includes interesting KPIs and findings, okay? Let's start with the top bar. The top bar is a simple, uh, it's kind of a simple overview of the data set we're looking at, okay? So over the last month in our specific uh, control of corporate environment, we have, uh, we have seen 12 hosts, 12 uh, hypervisors. Uh, we have seen a bit more than 500 VMs. Uh, almost 100 managed computers. Managed computers are essentially uh, computers that has the control of agent running, okay? We can see the unique number of uh, client names and unique number of users. This is really relevant for anyone dealing with per device or per, uh, per user licensing. We can see the total number of sessions and the total number of apps running uh, uh, in our environment. If we scroll down a bit, we can start seeing the actual widgets based on the data, okay? so. Uh, we have trends widgets, which will show the major performance metrics for each uh, entity we cover. So here you can see, for example, what would be the average CPU user across the entire host population we are monitoring. So you can see in our case, we're firmly around 50%. Same is true for RAM, for IO, and for network usage. Um, the same widget exists also for, for computers. Uh, and the same is also available for sessions, but for sessions, rather than showing you the uh, the CPU RAM IO footprint, we actually show some interesting KPIs that are more relevant for end user computing environments. So we can see the peak on current active sessions over time. 
You can see the, the average login duration, again, over the last 30 days. You can see the overall bandwidth, uh, available bandwidth for sessions, and you can see the average latency. Okay, and each of these, it's important to note that each of these uh, um, metrics here can be drilled down further to the relevant report. Okay, so login duration will actually drill down to the session activity report, where you can see the login duration stats on a per session basis over the same time frame. Okay, and the same is true for uh, if you want to see the whole CPU usage over time, you can again click on the click on the relevant uh, um, uh, icon in the top in the environment assessment report and drill down to see the additional data. Okay, um, so the same is true for any of the reports we see here. Uh, we have interesting widgets which, which will show the distribution of OSs or hypervisor versions, as you can see here. This is a nice way to see if you guys are still running maybe, uh, you know, an older Windows OS or an unsupported uh, hypervisor version environment. This widget still will show the top apps by popularity. So you can see for each app, you can see two dimensions. One would be the number of unique users and the other one would be the number of uh, unique instances. You can see in our case, we run a lot of command line and PowerShell. Uh, you, know, you know, we have some Java apps and some other stuff you can see here. Um, obviously in a more traditional office environment, you will see probably office apps or, you know, your CRM apps, et cetera. So now obviously we don't have time to cover everything in here, but as you can see, this is a pretty high level and yet uh, quite a robust data set that enables you to, to cover your environment in real time over the last few days and find interesting findings. The last thing I want to mention here is the top consumers, okay? So we have your top consumers widgets divided by different entities. So that would be the host, computers, uh, users, and applications. So for each entity, let's look on users, for example. I can click on the relevant metric, in this case, logon duration, and see over the last 30 days who suffered from the slowest logons. So we have uh, you know, a few guys in here. And the same is relevant for computers, right? So we can click, click on RAM and see which computers over the last 30 days were utilizing the highest amount of RAM in my environment. Okay, and the same is true for host and applications. So a pretty nifty uh, uh, way to see the top consumers over the last 30 days. Okay, I'm going to move forward into the size and accommodation report. This is by far my favorite report in Insights. Uh, I think that after we we'll see this five minutes demo, you will agree with me. So what we're doing here, again, we're looking on the last 30 days worth of data, and we essentially try to, to do two things. Hey, show you in high level what's your uh, over-provisioning state in regards to CPU and RAM in your uh, managed state. And B, we show you the specific, the specific recommendations on a per workload basis. Okay, so let's let's start with the high level uh, high level data. So again, we're looking on one month worth of data, as you can see here, uh, and and the screen is divided to CPU sizing widgets and RAM sizing widgets. Okay, so let's look on a few interesting KPIs. You can see in my case, out of uh, 100 almost 100 managed computers, we can see that 71%, uh, which is a bit more than 70 computers in my case, are over provisioned from a CPU perspective. Only 22% are right-sized right and 7% are under-provisioned. Okay, and you can see the same numbers from a RAM perspective. Okay, what we're showing here, which is pretty interesting, is essentially how much RAM you can actually um, um, get back to the cluster, right? Because we are obviously not utilizing almost uh, a bit more than 300 gigabytes in here, and all of this can be uh, brought back to the cluster and, and be claimed by the LVMs, assuming you will you will uh, follow our right sizing recommendation here. Okay, we also show you how your organization is ranked compared to the other uh, organizations we have in our database. Okay, so in our case, I'm pretty good. So I'm better than almost 60% of organizations. I can tell you that based on our research finding, more than 90% of the organization are massively over provisioning their environment. And, and I'll cover that in a bit. Okay, so again, on the, tops, on the top part of the report, this is, high-level metrics about your uh, uh, CPU and RAM over provisioning. If we scroll down a bit, we'll get this grid, which shows you the recommendation on a per VM or per workload basis. Let's sort this based on RAM recommendation. You can see here this IOP LS server, LS01 server, 
Um, let's see what we, we see here, okay? So first look, let's look on the suge suggestions. So we see that currently this VM has 12 CPUs assigned and 32 gigs of RAM, and you can see our suggested uh, numbers in here. So we suggest downsizing this VM to six virtual CPUs and downsize it to 14 gigs of RAM. And on the, on the lower part here, you can actually see the justification for this, right? So which stats are you based on that actually allows us to to be really confident about our suggestions. So what you see here is the CPU usage over time. This graph here is the actual CPU usage. The blue line is the number of assigned CPUs and the dotted line is what we suggest. So as you can see over the past month, we, you know, like only once or twice, we actually reached the six CPU usage, which is a great justification to go ahead and downsize this VM. And the same is true for RAM usage. You can see that uh, we have 32 gigs assigned, but we never crossed uh, the 14 gigs RAM usage. Okay, so this is again a really great way to see which VMs are massively over provisioned and go ahead and fix that. And then you can go back in here and see that indeed you reclaimed uh, 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 proper resources and now, the, now less VMs are over provisioned. Okay, now um, as I mentioned, we actually uh, did a pretty massive, a pretty massive research on this data. Um, I'm actually I'm going to to, uh, to send you via the chat right now a link to to download our white paper. Let's see if I can do it here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just sent you guys a link in the GoToMeeting chat about uh, about this provisioning white paper. Essentially, we studied anonymous data from. Uh, from all the workloads we are monitoring, we just took the CPU and RAM usage versus the assigned resources. And as mentioned, we have found that, you know, tons of them are way over provisioned. So go ahead, you know, download the white paper, read the data, and obviously, you know, go ahead and, and use the size and recommendation in your environment to actually optimize your own state. Okay, it's pretty easy as you can see it. The only thing you need to do is install the monitor service, make sure data is uploaded, and then consume the size and recommendations you can find here. Okay, so these are the, uh, the two new reports in, in, in Insights. One small note for those who have seen this report before, just recently in the latest Insights version, which was deployed, uh, I think, two or three weeks ago, uh, we have added a folder, folder selector to this report. So now you can actually focus on, on, specific in, on a specific data set and, and Insights will actually filter the data to show you, to show you the recommendations only for that specific uh, selected folder in here. Okay, so it's a small enhancement to the size of the invitation report. Okay, so as promised, I am going to show you a sneak peek of what's coming in 7.3. So let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, so what you'll see on screen right now, this is an alpha version of Control Up 7.3. Um, I want to show you the two major features we are working on, and I think it's going to be uh, uh, super cool for anyone managing, uh, uh, let's say, a more hybrid environment in his, in his uh, back in his network. So the two major features are VMware vSAN integration. And for the first time ever, we now support Linux, uh, uh, Linux environments, and we can actually show in real time process data and, and in-guest data for Linux workloads. Okay, let's start with vSAN. So I guess a lot of you guys have heard about vSAN. Uh, vSAN is a rather popular... Uh, uh, HCI technology from VMware. Uh, we know that it's 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 a rapidly growing uh, market for VMware. We've seen lots of customers starting to use that instead of traditional storage. So in 7.3, we are, I think, one of the first vendors to integrate, to fully integrate with the vSAN APIs, which enables us to see vSAN just like any other data store uh, in Control App. Okay, so if you go to the storage view, you can now see uh, vSAN-based data stores with all the regular metrics you've seen um, you know, you've seen from, from other hypervisors, but the cool thing here is that we've added some pretty uh, interesting metrics which are specific for vSAN, okay? So this would include things like the vSAN free capacity, uh, vSAN congestion and outstanding IOs, um, and lots of stuff like the vSAN health, which enables you to see what's the current health of the specific vSAN uh, storage you're looking at, okay? So it's a pretty massive integration. Uh, anyone is Using vSAN or planning to use vSAN is going to enjoy this uh, uh, real-time visibility into vSAN-based workloads. Now, the other major feature in 7.3 is Linux integration. So 
let's let me show it a minute. So here you can see, for example, um, this would be a CentOS Linux server running uh, uh, running MySQL. Um, and for the first time ever, we can now drill down into a Linux-based OS and actually see sessions, processes, and logical disk in lag. Okay, so this is quite exciting. This is the first time we're, we're showing something like this. And, and there you go, right? I can drill down into any Linux-based uh, uh, CentOS or Reddit workload, and I can see in real time the processes running inside the Linux OS. This includes all the major metrics you're familiar with uh, from the Windows world. So that would be uh, CPU usage, memory usage, uh, disk IO, uh, and some specific Linux metrics like the nice priority uh, and the PPAD. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, um, I think, you know, anyone managing an estate who also includes Linux servers, like, you know, Apache servers or MySQL, why not, would enjoy this, you know, this unique ability to see both Windows servers and Linux servers in the same screen and drill down to the process level in real time. So super cool. Uh, and obviously, we also integrated the, the, the logical disk monitoring. So for each Linux uh, workload, we can also see the Linux partitions with uh, both the regular metrics we know from VM, from Windows, like uh, capacity and, and uh, uh, you know, IO usage and IO latency. And we have also added some specific Linux metrics or, or metadata, like the, the mount points, um, the, the, the in nodes, etc. So stay tuned. This is... Uh, 7.3, vSAN, Linux, and we have a few other things planned. So you know, hopefully you find this exciting as, as I am. Okay, so time to, to wrap up, I guess. Um, I really want to thank you for your time. You know, hopefully you've seen the brand new feature in 7.2 and, and uh, are excited about them as I am. Uh, I do want to remind everyone that we offer a fully functioning 20, 21 days free trial. You know, simply go to our website and download Control Up. It's, it's simple as that. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining. Um, thanks a lot, and we'll meet on the next webinar. Have a great day.